How's it guys? Today, um, I just want to, we're starting this YouTube channel and we just want to show you guys that are struggling with uh, tuning your own vehicles, building your own cars. We, we're starting this because out of frustration. We just got so many tuners messing us around, guys that are building harnesses that are messing us around, uh, the best stuff. So it's I want to introduce you, this is Bilal. Hello right. guys, welcome to our channel. The owner of uh, QT Works, that's where we are. And we'll show you shop. Today we're going to be working on my car, my 1JZ E46 BMW. And um, yeah, you guys, uh, follow us on our channel. You know, YouTube has always given us a lot of um, insight if we've got problems. So we want to pay back. We want to just show you guys the problems that we get um, we're going to hopefully get this on the dyno and maybe you guys can as well um, fix your problems, learn, you know, learn with us as we go along. You know, we're just, we're just frustrated with the tuners and everybody in South Africa not being able to, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, help us, you know. Yeah. It's always a mission, it's always something we struggled with. I'm going to go up there now and I'm going to show you the last 2J that we've been, that is built and took to the, supposedly the best in South Africa and we're just struggling. It came back, he spent 45 grand on it, $3,000, it comes back and still, we're still having to fix it ourselves. So follow along with us, subscribe, uh, it's a journey and hopefully we all learn from this. Today you can see I've got uh, my overall on. Uh, or actually my splatter jacket as we call it here in South Africa and uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to add a flyback diode to this all right we'll show you guys so we've got the little flyback diode there because on the ECU master page it basically says any um, solenoid above 100 hertz needs this I don't know if you guys can see that so on the on on, on the diode we've got a little uh, uh, white part that will go to the positive and the other part will go to the negative. We'll show you now how that will get connected in there. Once we've done that, our kid so I'm gonna pause and we're gonna run through and as we go, stick around or... Okay, so what we've done is we've basically uh, taken the flyback diode, uh, the, red, uh, the, 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 the white part goes to our, um, one of the circle goes to the positive, and the other end goes to the negative. All right, so we're basically right to go up a VVTR solenoid. I want to show you guys on the inside what it looks like. So we basically brought it in. We're going to be running it off of our um, box, our fuse box. And... The relay, we're going to use it off ECU ignition, Lambda Flex, and then obviously it will have the VVTI solenoid. While I'm waiting for my uh, crimpers, I'm going to give you a rundown of this motor. This is a standard 1JZ, which I basically bought from the importers. Uh, did bearings, did some engineering to it. I flowed the head and just port matched every little thing around it. We're basically running a GT35 and um, we've got uh, oil pipes and water pipes connected to that. I'm running um, Yaris coils, so the individual coils on there. And then basically we've got flex fuel, we've got TPS, VVTI, all of these things need to work. And yeah, I'll keep you up to date once we got on the dyno. Show you guys some figures and we'll go through the setup for the VVTI solenoid. All right, guys, so in the ECU master, um, I just want to show you we're going to test it now, so it's been connected up. So once you go to your VVTI tab, you've got a difference there, you've got your VTEC control. So for 1JZ, we don't want to enable that. All right, so that's none. And when you open parameters uh, for the VVTI cam one. You'll get that tab there. Then you will have your um, uh, not testing it by inverting your output. All right, I've got that as auxiliary two because previously it was connected to H bridge one. 
So you'll see they give you a little drop down there. Um, so what the H bridge one did with the two negatives, it inverted the output and it's and it seemed like the solenoid was working. All right. So that's the, what we don't want. So I don't want to invert it. But instead, we go up here to the test tab. That's a little right mark there. You'll see it opens this up. It will give us, um, we want to test uh, auxiliary 2. We'll go there. We're going to test the 10 cycles. So normally for those, I put in about 500 milliseconds, which is half a second. All right, and we're going to test and see if it works. All right, it's working. Magic. Test again. There we go. All right. And if you guys can hear that, let me just quickly go to the front. Uh, Bilal is going to hit the test for us there. So that's the test that we got there. Okay. There we go. So now we know it's definitely working. Guys, we had a little bit of an issue with the uh, um, VTI not picking up. So I just want to go show you what setting that we had that was a, a little bit of an issue. At the triggers, the drop down menu, you go to your secondary trigger. So that will bring this menu up. Alright, so the settings for this one, we're running a VR sensor for the 1J. It's not a pull up, pull down, low filter, 2J, 3 teeth, falling edge. So that you'll have to check with your scope. Obviously, if you need to change it to rising or falling, so that um, I'll show you now what the scope needs to look like. And then this was our problem. This able sync above RPM. We had it set to 1500. So then obviously we couldn't set up the VVTI solenoid because it disables the cam signal. So that needs to be set to whatever. We've set it to 15,000, so it doesn't give us a hassle on that. And then I uh, just want to go show you guys what the scope needs to look like. All right, so obviously you need to make sure that your second trigger, the two lines don't line up with one another. Otherwise, you'll also have a, um, a issue. So that you need to change to rising or falling. And then obviously you'll get the offset that you're looking for there. Okay, let's quickly go look at our settings now. Further settings. Um, set that up. So that's out the way. Okie dokes. Now we go to this hook here. What we basically said to us before you start syncing, you need to look at your cam angle that you've got there. Once you start it, that's your offset on this little page. Once you start it, it should go to zero. So you should get a zero on that menu over there. Once you've started it, then you can set your minimum and maximum duty cycles we've got 150 hertz seems to be happy there then we went to set our steady state position we had um, the pids i just want to show you guys what we did here so basically the pids went to zero we still had uh, this populated and as we started increasing the duty cycle it obviously started showing us um, that we got movement on the cam so i'm going to post a link for you guys to hp academy um, and that follow that exam ex exact same process to get your vvti calibration sorted all right guys thank you